Hey everybody, this is Matthew Boyle from languagecardgames.com here today to show you Leitner cards. This is a kind of card game that you would use in conjunction with your physical Leitner box or other spaced repetition system. And basically what it does is it gamifies the uh, process even further. And uh, what I want to do today is give you a quick introduction of these cards and how you would use them and show you some of my favorites. And if you're interested, they are available for sale at languagecardgames.com in the shop. And be sure to subscribe before you check out because I will email you a coupon for this game or any game uh, that, you could, that you could use when you check out to get some savings. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is that you're looking at the backs of the cards now. And uh, the backs and the fronts have a little color code. There's going to be a red dot in the first, second, third, or fourth circle at the bottom of the card. And that dot has a special meaning. It tells you where to put these Leitner cards in your box. So if there's a red dot on the first space, it means you should put the card in front of the flash cards in any file. If the red dot is in the second space, it means you should... Sorry, I want to show you that a little bit better. It means you should shuffle the card or put the card somewhere in the middle of a group of flash cards in any file. If the dot is in the third space, that means that you should put the card behind the flash cards in any file. And if the dot is in the fourth space, that means you should use this card after you have finished all your files for the day. If this doesn't make the slightest bit of sense to you yet, you should probably um, familiarize yourself with how a Leitner box works. So I'll put a link in this video that explains how to even do this. First of all, you should already know how that works before you get into this kind of thing here. So these are the backs, and now I'm going to show you some of the fronts. The fronts have specific challenges in a range between easy and hard and uh, practical and concrete and abstract. So let's look at this first one. These are some of my favorites. Uh, this challenge is called Paraphrase. And again, this will be something that we're pulling out because this is a, a red dot on the one circle. This is something we would pull out uh, at the beginning, at, at, the, at the start of a file. So this, is, this one says, to pass every flashcard in this file, you may not say exactly what is written on the back. Rather, you must paraphrase, use synonyms, use new, different words, or make a restatement, etc. So you read that challenge, you know what to do, you go through that file and you pass the challenge, and then you can put this card somewhere else, and then you could grab a new one to replace it. These cards you can, um, you can put in as many as you like, whenever you like. You just need to be sure that you put them in the right position. Uh, you could add one every day, or you could put several in at once throughout the whole box, and then you would just happen upon them when the time is right. Okay, let's look at a second one. This one is one that would be in the midst of flashcards in any file because it has a red dot on number two. So we're going through flashcards and then we come upon this one. And then uh, we say, oh, I have a challenge card for today. It says polyglot power. This one's related to foreign languages. It's the only one specifically related to language learning. I should mention that these cards you can use with any kinds of flashcards you have, even if you're not learning languages. This is the only card that has to do with languages. And it says, for every language that you can translate the front and back of your next flashcard into, level that flashcard up once. 
So I would take my next flashcard and see if I could translate its content into another language. And if I can, it's going to let me boost that flashcard up to another level. That's something that happens a lot with uh, the Lightner cards as a kind of a reward. Your cards move up the level f in the levels faster. And if you get something wrong or make a mistake, then it might stay in the same place. I mean, if you can't do the challenge, it might stay in the same place or drop back down or something else will happen. All right. So let's put that one away. We'll put these over here. Third one, this would be behind the flashcards in a file. Okay. This one I really like. It's called Fungus. And it says, after finishing this file, remember this is red dot on three, so we've gone through all the flashcards in a file. Okay, this says, after finishing the file, choose one flashcard you got wrong, make two identical or related flashcards for it, and then drop each of the three cards into files one, two, and three. So if you make a mistake, that mistake is kind of going to grow into two or three related cards to really try to force you to drive an understanding of that home. Okay, and the fourth one. Some of these fourth ones, I don't know if this one is, but, oh, not quite. Um, this fourth one says to sketch a quick cartoon that represents one of the trickiest flashcards you encountered today and tape it somewhere where you can see it. Some of these uh, cards that have a red dot on the fourth position have to do with cards that have fully graduated from your system, from your box, or they might have to do with one of the cards that you've seen today. All right, so to show you, let's let's do another example of where they would go. Okay, so one thing I think that's important is you kind of want to be surprised. You don't really want to know what's coming. That's why I put the little color codes on the back as well as the front. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily that you look at and read all the challenges before you start, because that's going to take away some of the fun, some of the motivation, some of the mystery. So when you get these cards, um, refer to the color codes on the backs and place a few in your box. And then just go about your daily life as normal. When it's time for you to do your box, you're going to encounter them. And that will be something that motivates you to keep up with your box. And it, there'll be a surprise, you know, you won't know what's coming. So you could grab, for example, a Lightner card that has a red dot on one. Okay, so that those need to go in the front of any flashcards in any file. So I might put it here, for example, let's say this is my file one. Okay, that's gonna go right there. This is a red dot on two. So I could, if I wanted to, put this in the middle of the cards in level one, like so, or I could put it in the middle of the cards in any file. Okay, this is a red dot on three, so maybe I want to put this, you know, I already have two in level one, so I'm going to do something in level two now. So I'm going to go up to level two, and I'm going to put this behind all the flashcards in my level two. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's level two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these ones uh, don't go in the box. They, they, these, these ones you can grab whenever you like. You can draw one of these when you, finished, when you have finished all your cards for the day. So these would be something you, you might put in the very back or even keep outside of your box. Okay, these, these red dot ones. So I really hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Again, these are called Lightner cards, subtitle think inside the box and what that means is we're trying to qualitatively improve our interactions and our time with our flashcards with our Leitner boxes with our spaced repetition systems uh, a lot of challenges in here will stretch your thinking and get you thinking a little more creatively uh, as you use your flashcards uh, also, it may be worthwhile to note that I offer free shipping to any location in the world. So if you're interested, don't hesitate. Head on over to languagecardgames.com, and I look forward to seeing your questions and comments about the Lightner cards below.
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back here next time at Language Card Games.